This video will explain how to estimate the shear strength properties of soil based on the shear box test. So what we have here is um, we have results from four different tests. And uh, for each test, we uh, perform shear box. Um, and uh, the area of the sample was uh, 16 square centimeters. And when we uh, perform each test, we obtain at the end uh, normal force and uh, peak shear force and uh, residual shear force. What we are required to do is to uh, estimate the uh, peak and uh, residual shear parameters of the soil. And this is what we're going to do. So this example is taken from my book, which is called Soil Mechanics Through Project Based Learning. Well, first of all, uh, I would like you to watch uh, the video that we created. So this video explain uh, how to perform shear box tests, how to prepare samples, and what kind of results were obtained. And uh, this is the link of this video, and you should be able to see it uh, here. I'll put a link to this video. And um, this is a picture of a shear box sample. Uh, in this case, uh, we tested the sandy material. You see sand is here. So uh, for shear box test, it's very important the size of the shear box. So in this case, uh, we have the size uh, 10 centimeters and 10 centimeters. So sometimes uh, the smaller shear box, about six centimeters or sometimes even larger. So um, the larger the shear box, the more reliable results you can obtain. Now let's talk a little bit about the theory uh, behind the shear box test and how we analyze them. So we'll start with the, uh, this uh, schematic diagram. So this is uh, actually a result from a shear box test. The one that we plot as uh, shear displacements and typically we use millimeters because uh, the shear box size is already very small. So we cannot uh, shear a sample for uh, more than a few millimeters. And uh, here we have shear stress or sometimes we have shear force. But when you plot your results, make sure that it's shear stress. Just convert shear force to uh, shear stress. And for um, most of soil, especially for sandy material, dense sandy material, you're going to see results like this. So first, you will see increase in shear stress uh, to some point. And then as you continue shearing, you will see that uh, shear stress will decrease. And at some point, it will become like more or less steady. And this point we call residual shear strength. And uh, uh, the peak one we call peak shear strength. So for many applications, we're all, all, always after um, uh, peak shear strength. Um, sometimes it's also important to know the residual shear strength, um, maybe when we estimate uh, long term, um, long round out landslides. In this case, residual shear strength will be also uh, useful for us. But uh, most of the time, it's a peak shear strength we're after. And this is how we interpret these results. So you see, uh, this is the results from one test. So let's say it's test one. Um, of course, uh, it's better to uh, conduct as many tests as possible. And when we conduct more tests, Typically, we would uh, increase the normal force, a uh, normal shear stress, and then we'll perform a shear test again. So um, the way we analyze it, so we plot as uh, normal stress. So normal stress, the one that we uh, uh, establish on the soil before we do any shearing. And when we perform shear test, we're going to get this peak shear uh, stress like this. So this peak shear stress goes here. So let's say that uh, for this particular case, uh, normal force was um, 20 kPa and shear stress was uh, 15 kPa. So in this case, normal stress would go here, 20 shear stress will be here kPa. Then we're going to uh, perform uh, next test. Let's call it test two. And uh, for this test two, we're going to increase normal force. So we we'll increase it to 50 kPa. And then we'll um, perform this test again. We're gonna get again this kind of uh, curve 
this is going to be the peak shear stress that we're going to get let's say it will be 37 kp so what we're going to do next this is the second point on the curve this is going to be 50 and this is going to be 37 so you see how we have four uh, different test results so as i already mentioned the more the better and what we do next is uh, we would um, um, interpret these results and we're going to draw a line of uh, best fits and this is what we call a failure or strength envelope or failure line uh, you will see that in many textbook examples this line is uh, perfect it just goes through all the points that we have here but in real life it's not um, uh, exactly the same thing that you see in textbooks so in textbook what we do we just uh, adjust the values so that they're all on the same line but when you analyze results from uh, real life tests you will notice that maybe one point will be here here so what you need to do uh, you need to draw a line of best fit and then you just measure the friction angle so the friction angle it's going to be tangent tangent phi is change in uh, shear stress to change in normal stress and uh, you will see where this uh, failure envelope line crosses shear stress axis so you just measure this distance and this is cohesion cohesion and we use c for cohesion okay now let's look um, at the results of the um, tests uh, that were given so here i guess as i mentioned we have four different test results and we have uh, normal force um, the one that we applied before we did any shearing then we had peak shear force and we had residual shear force okay so here you should be careful because you see that it's it says force and not stress so we don't plot force we actually need to plot uh, stresses and what we need to do is we need to uh, convert force into stress uh, normal stress and this is going to be a shear stress p or peak and this one we need to change to shear stress residual so the way to do it you just need to remember that uh, normal stress or shear stress it's force divided by area and the area was already given to us uh, area was uh, 16 uh, square centimeters so what we're going to do is we're going to do um, convert normal force for the test number one uh, and the peak shear force for test number one uh, we'll do it together so we have um, normal force which is kilonewtons 0 0.15 divided by area you see here we have a square centimeters uh, we need to change it to meters so when we change it to meters it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0.016 so that the answer that we're going to obtain which is 93.75 will be in uh, kilonewton per square centimeters or in other way it's in kilopascals okay and uh, we can do the same for um, shear stress so again it's uh, force divided by area so the area of the sample is still the same it's just uh, the direction we apply force is different Com normal force and shear force uh, different directions but the area is the same so we know that peak shear force was 0 0.12 and we divide it by the area of 0.0016 uh, will give us um, approximately uh, 75 kilonewton per square meters so um, you can practice more for test 2 3 and 4 you can do it by yourself um, the answer that you're going to get it's uh, shown in this table so this is 93.75 so is this one then 75 will be peak shear force sorry peak shear stress and if we do the same thing for the uh, residual um, shear force, if we convert it to shear stress, it's going to be about 
So what we need now is uh, normal stress, uh, peak shear stress, and also residual shear stress. And we use these numbers uh, to plot uh, the graph and uh, obtain um, friction angle and cohesion. Okay, so it's already a drawing for us. Um, I took it again from my book. I drew it before. So uh, these are the values of uh, peak uh, shear stress. So uh, you see how they're not on the line. So that's uh, real data. We didn't modify it so that they all sit on the same line. So that's normal. Um, the way we analyze it, uh, either you do it by hand or you can use uh, Excel functions. So you're going to draw line of uh, best fit as shown here. And this line is going to be the uh, failure line um, that will give you um, shear strength properties, peak shear stress uh, properties. And these are values, uh, these numbers are related to the residual uh, shear stress. And again, we will uh, analyze it separately from peak shear stress values. Uh, we're going to draw a line that will be best fit. And um, uh, theoretically, and most of the time in practice, this line should start from the origin. Because when we talk about uh, residual uh, shear stress and uh, residual uh, shear stress parameters, uh, the cohesion is almost zero. When we talk about peak shear stress, and we'll talk about um, uh, hard clay. So in this case, we can also get cohesion. And uh, this is the case that we have here. So if we draw it to scale, we can measure this distance. And this one will be about 34 uh, kPa. So uh, cohesion, it's uh, 34 kPa. Um, to measure the uh, shear stress, uh, again, uh, if you use uh, Excel function, uh, the Excel function will give you already uh, the equation for this uh, trend line. And you can just uh, easily convert it to friction angle. Uh, if you just draw it by hand, what you can do is you can take two points that I see it on this line. And then uh, this is going to be change in uh, shear stress. And then there's going to be change in normal stress. So to find the angle, you just need to find tangent or friction angle, which is uh, change in shear stress divided by change in normal stress. So um, if you do this uh, exercise by yourself, you will see that um, for uh, peak friction angle, it will be 24.8 degrees. And for the residual friction angle, the value will be smaller. And that's the way it's supposed to be, 18.7 degrees. So these are the answers. Thanks.